welcome to this fly tying 123 fly tying tutorial. My name is Devin Olson. I uh, run a blog and fly shop at tacticalflyfisher.com and I'd like to thank Gilbert and Derek for letting me be uh, your guest tire on, in this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be tying for you this Pleva Peridagone nymph which is a great little mayfly imitation anytime you have a small uh, mayfly around like a betis or a PMD you can choose uh, whatever color scheme imitates your local uh, bugs. I was uh, introduced to this fly in Bosnia this year. It's actually a Spanish fly in, Oregon, in origin, uh, but uh, our guides in Bosnia for the World Fly Fishing Championship this year that we had during practice, uh, Renato and Jovo were their names, they uh, showed this, this fly and I saw it quite a few times in fly shops in the region as well, so it's quite common there. It worked really well on the Pliva River during the championship for me. Um, this, uh, this is a betis version without a hot spot, but you could, I'm going to tie one with a hot spot for you uh, in this tutorial. Uh, this fly sinks really well because it has no hackle or uh, dubbing fibers that slow it down in the, in the water. Um, the hard outer shell of the, the resin uh, really helps it to, to plummet fast. and You can get down in some heavy and deep water with a fairly light fly, especially if you have light tippet. Alright, so let's get started. I have a size 16 Hannock 230 hook here, which is a great nymph hook. It's one of my favorites. And then I have a 2.3 millimeter copper bead. You could oversize that to a 2.8 if you really needed to get down. You could also use a silver or a gold bead. Uh, this is 15 thousandths lead wire. I'm going to go ahead and make three wraps on the shank. And with the hook upside down, I'll jam that. Uh, lead wire up into the bead and that is gonna keep it in place and also tilt it up which I'll show you here in a second just to make sure it stays I'm adding a little bit of super glue and you'll see when I tilt this up here that the bead is a little bit off center or basically tilted up and that'll not only uh, help to flip the fly upside down like a jig and fish it like a jig on a straight nymph uh, hook here, but also it maintains that hook gap, especially with this upturned point on this hook. It helps you to still be able to grab a little bit of jaw and hold fish better. Now I have some Vivas olive uh, body quills here, and I'm just going to use it like it's my thread since it comes on a thread spool. This uh, it is a little bit delicate, so don't pull too hard. It can be kind of easy to break compared to uh, some threads. And I'm not going to bring the thread all the way back to the bend, but stop it just a little bit short. Then I'm taking some Coq de Leon fibers here. Uh, since the fly is Spanish in origin, you probably better use some Spanish hackle as a tail. And Coq de Leon gives you great speckling um, that's really uh, imitative of the, the variegated type patterns you'll find in mayfly tails. Okay, so I'm going to make a pinch wrap with this, so I, I transferred it over to my left hand. I'm putting the, the body quills up in between my thumb and index finger here, wrapping around the shank, and then back up here. I'll see, there you go, you can see it in the video now. And I'm just uh, going to pull up, and that will actually lock those tails right in line so that they aren't off kilter on the hook shank. Nice and straight. I've got four fibers here. You should probably use three or four. The next step, I have some 140 denier uh, fluorescent chartreuse vivis power thread here. I'm just going to tie that in as my ribbing and put it on the far side of the fly. Then form your body. Make a nice taper with those uh, power or the body quills. And it is kind of thick compared to a fine thread, so you do have to be a little bit careful. And then to make my hot spot, I'm actually going to go ahead and switch threads here. And this is a fluorescent orange Vivas 16 uh, knot. You could also use 14 uh, knot. All right, once that's gone, I'm going to take and spin this chartreuse ribbing thread and that will basically tighten it up so that it forms more of a rope 
type shape so that when you wrap it, it stays round and, and forms a little bit of a ridge off of the body of the fly. It just makes that ribbing stick out a little more. Okay. I'm just going to build up a little bit of a hot spot there. Not too much. And go ahead and whip finish it. Now the next step is kind of uh, interesting. I'm basically going to take some black nail polish here and uh, make a wing case uh, with this black nail polish. And once it's buried in the resin, it'll look really nice. Um, typically it'll want to soak down in a little bit into that slot, so it typically takes two quick coats. Now um, I normally will just tie about a half dozen of these to this point because it's going to take a second for that uh, polish to set before I can do the next step. So I have another one ready for you here that has already dried. So after you've tied a half dozen or so to that point, then you'll do this uh, next set of steps to finish the fly all at once. So I have some Loon uh, clear fly finish in thin here. Just going to go ahead and cover the fly in that finish. You want to get it all the way around and you can put a, a gob on there if you want and then just use the, the shank of that brush to uh, take it back off and go ahead and hit it with your UV light. Now I don't know if, how well you can see on the video there but this uh, that ribbing really fluoresces in the UV light and uh, you can imagine that it would fluoresce in the sun as well. Then normally you could stop right there, but I found that the, the UV resin will kind of cloud up over time and it's not, um, it, doesn't, it just doesn't stay as, as glossy as I would like. So I'm taking some hard as whole and I'm gonna finish it off with just a little coat of that. And then once that sets, you'll have a nice glossy flea of a Paragon. And that's it. That's the fly. Go tie yourself some. Catch a bunch of fish on it. I really appreciate the opportunity to tie this fly in this tutorial for you tonight. If you liked what you saw, please uh, like and share on Facebook. Subscribe to the Fly Tying 123 YouTube channel and you can also find the Tactical Fly Fisher YouTube channel, some other patterns that I've tied there as well. And you can uh, find the materials for this fly at tacticalflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching.